Hello and welcome to the Howling Abyss tutorial video. Not necessarily so much a tutorial video, but more of a video where I'm going to go through and show you uh, the cards from the new uh, the Howling Abyss dungeon deck for Iron Helm and, and the original deck that comes with the base game. This sort of give you a side-by-side -side comparison and discuss each of the cards and how they differ from the original deck and the new deck. Now, this deck is not meant to replace this deck. It is meant as an alternative dungeon. So I grew up in the 80s, born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s. I played a lot of early um, computer RPGs. So I always sort of like the idea of when the dungeon brick color changes you know you're on a different level of a dungeon or in a different dungeon altogether so the new deck has uh, a blue um a blue brickwork and obviously it's a different door a steel door and some sort of creature behind it some gold on the floor a sword and some hanging skulls on a rope um so that's what the backs that's how the backs look different I went with blue because I thought it would complement all the other colors in the game. So without wasting any more time, let's take a look at um, each card in the uh, old deck and the new deck and kind of go through a little um, compare and contrast. So first card up is the clearing. I started with the clearing because it's the one card where really nothing changed. As you can see, there is new artwork in the new game. My art style has changed. Hopefully, in most people's opinion, it has gotten better. Um, that's always the hope. And um, yeah, so basically, the clearing card is the same. You, it just basically allows you to draw a plot card. So the original game, the wording just says, draw a plot card. The new one, I revised it a little bit. It says, draw and resolve a plot card. Other than that, the cards are the same, just new artwork. So we will move on. Next up, we have... The skirmish card now there's a couple of things that are, are going to change here but we'll show you the second of those in a minute here but obviously again new artwork i'm not going to keep saying that over and over it's pretty obvious um the uh the wording up here doesn't really change in any of my cards and uh, new cards typically um, but the what happens in the dungeon does so in the original skirmish card uh, if, it's the, if it's the first card you draw uh, draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level plus two to their health in the new card it says draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their health instead of plus two it's a little bit weaker um, so if you draw the skirmish card as the first card Card, you might actually be compelled to resolve it whereas before you typically would always pass on this card on the flip side if it's drawn as the second card it used to say draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level plus four to their health in the new card it says the same thing draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level plus four to their health but you gain an extra bonus gold if you defeat this enemy. So there's a little bit of a extra little reward to, to this card. So the skirmish card now is a little bit softer than it was before. And another thing that you'll take note of is in the new game, there is only two skirmish cards. Whereas in the old game, there was a whopping five skirmish cards. So let's get through all of those. The reason for that is there's a new dungeon card or a new card in this deck that is an offensive card that is pretty deadly. So we'll get to that one when it comes up. Next up we have the ambush, everyone's favorite card, the ambush. So the ambush in the original game, if you drew it as the first card, you would draw the enemy card and ignore their initial damage add the dungeon level to their health so if you drew the ambush card as the first card you got to actually be the one doing the ambush but if you draw it as the second card draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their initial damage so now they do whatever dungeon level you're on they do that to your damage add it to their damage when they first attack you and add the devil the dungeon level plus four to their health so the ambush card as the first card almost invited you to go to, into combat and when you drew it as a second card it was pretty deadly in the new version you can draw uh, draw an enemy card and ignore their initial damage add three 
to your first attack. So it's you're even more powerful. You almost always want to ambush when an ambush card comes up as the first card. Um, it also says here, add the dungeon level to the enemy's health, which has not changed. Okay, now, if you draw it as the second card in the, the new card, um, draw the enemy card and add the dungeon level to the en uh, enemy's to the, I'm sorry, add the dungeon level to their initial damage. So they're attacking you again, so that hasn't changed. Add the dungeon level plus five to their health. So now the ambush um, card drawn as the second card is a little slightly bit more deadly. So getting it second is even worse than it was before and it was always pretty bad. Um, there are three ambush cards in the new deck. So, and I believe there are three in the original. So that stays the same. Next up, we have the treasure card. There's gotta be something good in this dungeon, right? It can't just all be combat. So we have the lonely treasure card, because there's only one in the deck. In the original game, you got one gold if it was drawn as the first card, that remains the same. Um, however, um, if you draw it as the second card, it used to be draw one loot card and one potion card. Pretty nice. But in the new version, the, the player is given a choice. You can draw one loot card and one potion card, just like you could in the original deck, or you can gain D6 gold and one ration. So dependent upon what you need um, when this card is pulled, you're not sort of pushed into pulling, a, drawing a loot and a potion card, you may really need a ration, and gold is actually pretty useful now. Let us reveal the next card. We have the Arrow Trap. Arrow Trap has significantly changed. Um, there's another car a card like this you're going to see coming up, the Mushroom Grove, which has changed in a very similar fashion. Um, it used to be just a fixed amount uh, you uh, got of damage from the Arrow Trap. So before, you used to just get one um, po uh, poison, sorry, one poison if you it was the first card you drew, or two poison if it was the second card. Now you have to roll a, a d6 and see what happens. Um, if you roll low, you can get two, but you can also not get poisoned. So if you roll a five or a six, there's a potential chance that you dodge that arrow. So what this does is if you draw it as the first card now, you may actually think that you might, you might convince yourself to actually resolve this card, especially if you know there might be some other nasty cards waiting for you. Um, if it's drawn as the second card, all that happens is you, you're, the, the best that's gonna happen is you're gonna get one poison, but now you can get up to three poison from the arrow trap instead of just the two. So it's a little bit more random, but that, that um, ability to possibly not get poisoned is pretty um, significant. So let's keep moving on. try to get through this video as quickly as I can within reason. Campsite. Um, I believe the campsite remained fairly, um, f pretty much the same except for a few little adjustments here. Uh, cooking, um, spend one ration to gain three energy, that remains the same. Searching, um, searching before was you gained one ration, but I've obviously play tested this game a million times. I didn't often use that search thing, um, action, so now you, if you do the search action, you gain one ration and one gold. So it kind of incentivizes you to maybe consider doing that. Um, or you can rest. It used to be spend one ration to gain three health and lose one poison. Now if you rest, you spend one ration to gain three health and lose one poison. So it's a little bit better for healing at the campsite. So the campsite has been made, has been improved for the player. Moving on. We have the merchant. This has got some significant changes here. Before you had two options, you could buy and you can sell. When you decided, if you you could do both, you could do multiple. Um, but if you were to buy, you had to build a dun you had to build his store based on what level of the dungeon you were in. I got rid of that. Now, if you buy to see what goods the merchant has, draw three loot and two potion cards. So I just made the merchant 
uh, always good for purchasing from. You can always get good stuff from the merchant. Um, you can sell at the merchants. Uh, the merchant will buy any unwanted items from you for one gold each. It's exactly the same as it was before. But the one significant change with the merchant is you may trade with him now and you may swap any single item you have with an item that the merchant has as long as the item you give him has a greater value than the one you are you take so if you have say um, an extra mace or something that's worth two gold or say it's worth three gold and he has an item that's worth two gold that you want you can just swap those items and just discard your mace and take the item from him I think that makes the merchant actually a way more appealing um, card to come upon in the dungeon. Let's keep moving on. We have the Labyrinth. I'm um, in the original game. Uh, you discard one ration. If you have no rations, you lose three health. Um, now, if you discard one, discard one ration, if you have no rations, you still lose three health, but you gain a gold. Because I figured you're wandering around in this maze, you're going to come across some sort of an item. You're going to find something. Um, so basically, if you could draw it as a second card, you have to discard two rations, lose three health for each ration you cannot discard. So it's exactly the same as the original Lambert, but now if you draw it as a second card, you gain a potion, so you find a potion um, in the maze. So what that does is makes the Lambeth not quite as terrifying as it used to be. Moving on, we're almost through the base cards here. The Mushroom Grove. So this is a card I said is uh, similar to the Poison Arrow in that the results are random. Instead of just gaining one ration if you draw it first or, draw, or gaining two if you draw it second, now you have to roll and see what happens. And where this becomes somewhat scary is if it's the first card you draw, there's the potential that you can gain poison. If you draw, if you roll a six-sided dice and you get a one or a two, otherwise you're going to get varying degrees of amount of rations that you gain, up to three. So there's the potential to get more rations from the mushroom grove than you did before, but you also have the potential of getting poisoned. Let's move on. We have the last card is the altar this one had significant changes made to it the altar was always a card that i welcomed whenever i'm playing obviously this game i like seeing the altar pop up and i'm sure most players do as well um, but sometimes it didn't really offer you the things that you were looking for before you can uh pray for a blessing and you can gain d6 minus d6 blessing tokens i think that actually is just my original card it's, it's changed to one blessing token in, in in everyone else's copy or you could heal and you can lose poison now in the new at the new altar you can uh, pray for a blessing gain one blessing token just like before or like i said this is this is an old original one of my original print offs so in everyone else's copy, it says uh, gain one blessing token. So now you can pray for a blessing, gain one blessing token. You can pray for strength. So that's new, gain two energy. Sometimes energy is hard to come by in Iron Helm. So this helps to address that. Or healing, you can dis um, d discard um, D6 minus D6 poison tokens. So very similar to how it, uh, the original card is, but you could also pray for favor. Move up one space on morality tracker. That's gonna come into play in subsequent cards that we're gonna look at because the favor tracker is very, very important now in Iron Helm if you're using the new dungeon deck. So let's move on to the four new cards that come in the Howling Abyss. First up, there's actually two of these. This is the Savage Encounter. Now this is the card that replaces some of those skirmish cards and it's pretty nasty. So I, like I said, I sort of nerfed or made the skirmish card a little easier. This card is not. Uh, before you stands a formidable foe, draw two enemy cards and discard the enemy with less health. You must fight the remaining enemy, adding the dungeon level plus one to their health. Um, if you draw two cards and they're tied, you obviously, as the player, get to choose which enemy you want to face. But obviously what that's what that's going to do is if you're drawing two cards, you're going to have to fight the nastier of the two foes. 
If you draw it as the second card, it says, there is no escaping this vile creature. Draw four enemy cards and discard the three enemies with the least health. You must fight the remaining enemy that has the most health, adding the dungeon level plus three to their health if tied player chooses so if the the two with the highest if there's two or three with the highest health or whatever the, you as the player get to choose which enemy you want to face but this is a nasty card because it's going to cycle you through that enemy deck and force you to encounter some of the more deadly foes and there's two of these in the deck next up we have the mystical fountain you got to have a fountain it's a dungeon crawler okay so before you stands a grand fountain you are drawn to it by a potent allure your eyes wide open you cup your hand and ladle the warm liquid to your lips this is just a random roll different things occur the higher you roll the better so let's go quickly through these uh one draw an enemy card adding the dungeon level to its health. So you could get in a fight here. Um, two, you immediately regret your actions, gain one poison. Three, what luck, you find a gold coin. Four, you suddenly feel quite refreshed, gain three health. Five, a gift is granted to you, gain one potion. Or six, which is really awesome, gain blessing tokens equal to your current dungeon level. Pretty awesome. So if you're deeper in the dungeon, you can get up to three or four, potentially five blessing tokens, which will help you for the final boss. Next up, we have the false idol. Your eyes lock onto a huge evil statue carved into the wall. It is begging to be worshiped. What shall you do? Now you have four options. You can beg for power, move down one space on the morality tracker, gain two energy and one loot card so that's a lot you're gaining two energy and a loot card and all you have to do is move down one on the morality tracker beg for wraith or what i'm sorry beg for wraith that'd be ridiculous beg for wealth uh, move down one space on the morality tracker you gain two gold and a potion um, you can be, uh, beg for life you can gain two health and a ration. So all great rewards, but you're having to move down the morality tracker. Or you have the, you do have the option to ignore the false idol. You move up one space on the morality tracker, but you lose one health. So you're, you're not gonna get any of these awesome rewards. You're gonna lose a health, but you get to move up one on the morality tracker. So what would that possibly do for you? Seeing as how the morality tracker wasn't utilized a whole lot in the original Iron Helm, except for some of the plot cards, now you have the Archangel card. I wanted to end on this card because it is um, it really adds a, a great deal of tension based on some of these other cards in here that allow you to move up and down on the morality tracker. It says, a flash of holy light causes you to freeze. When the brightness fades, you see the form of a woman with large wings. She has come to judge your deeds. Check your placement on the morality tracker and refer to the chart below. So based on where you are on the morality tracker, the archangel is either going to heal you or damage you so if you are you know plus one on the morality tracker she'll heal you for one health all the way up to um, four health she can heal you for which is pretty significant especially if you move up that tracker early in the game every time this card comes along you're going to be getting healed uh, subsequently to that or um, alternatively to that if you're going to this false idol card a lot and moving down and, and just getting free good stuff good loot and you're like oh who cares about my, my morality then if this card happens to pop up you are going to get damage for up to four health so that is the pressure luck mechanic that has been implemented in this deck. So that is the tutorial slash overview video for the Howling Abyss expansion for Iron Helm. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you can pick this copy up for yourself. Thank you.